uh, yesterday we were adjusting the membership functions for the fuzzy logic algorithm to work better in terms of detecting abnormal ECG waveforms. Currently doing the carry quest port and the port is a flask application. We obviously have a HTML code. We have two JavaScript, Java stream code. So all the waveforms are actually generated in the front end. We also have, have the game logic. And the main thing that we are currently working on is this uh, Flask application that is working in the back end. We're currently getting in there the membership functions names any problem with the names so we modified last time the names the names the names so we actually have um, the bot why are there only four five rules i don't know this one actually not working at the amplitude there was an error this thing anyway i thought it's working now in the sense that uh, you can come back uh, next day or something and continue the same chat doesn't seem to be the case does not seem to be the case and I'll uh, start sharing the code with you I can it take the whole code at once I don't think it's a good idea all right let's break down your HTML code okay okay okay, okay okay we don't need explanation of the code don't break it out I said there will be four files respond at the end but make sure you read the whole code so you have access to it. Generate waveform function. Randomly selects and generates either a normal or an abnormal waveform. The use of mathematical functions to simulate ECG waveforms is quite clever. It adds a realistic touch to your game. Make sure that the waveform generation aligns with real world okay, ECG okay, okay, patterns. Okay. I said the quick responses. Why aren't you transcribing? Here is the game logic code. And after that there will be the Flask uh, Python application script in a separate the prompt game variables sets up variables for score game speed and waveform types drawing functions includes functions to draw the waveform score and clear the canvas score management handles scoring with hits false alarms correct rejections and misses adjust score based on player actions click event handling detects player clicks on the canvas and updates the score accordingly game loop manages the main gameplay loop updating the game state moving the waveform and drawing elements on the canvas waveform analysis and display Sends waveform data to a backend for analysis, presumably a Flask app, and displays the results on the web page. Key points. The game dynamically adjusts speed based on the score, adding complexity as the player progresses. The scoring system is well thought out, rewarding correct identification of waveforms and penalizing mistakes. Integration with a backend for waveform analysis adds an educational and interactive element to the game. Okay, 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 okay. Overall, this is... it looks like a solid script for a game that combines entertainment with educational aspects of ECG waveform analysis. Currently getting an error for this code that we would like to correct. It should be a simple one. Here is the output of the Flask terminal. So would you recommend using... Um, would you recommend... Would you be generating prompts for me to use in github copilot or are you going to be generating the code yourself and delete the previous rules that didn't work very well still don't quite understand how copilot works in terms of providing specific um, advice fix okay now it seems to be more specific to our needs so we're having problems in frequency a membership so frequency membership low medium high so instead of low medium high we should have low normal high this should be called normal can we fix this instead of changing the membership function so in theory it should change the medium to use normal anyway we should have low normal and high and there's something wrong there's a comma missing right this is that uh, can clear that control f5 it 
Yeah, we have the thing running again, which is great. We need to check how well it's working. In case no normality is at uh, point 0.1. It's normal, so it shows point 0.1. That's normal again. Normality point 0.5. Okay, that makes sense. And that's not good. That's not good as well. Uh, I wonder how much uh, Copilot knows. I think the problem might be with positive peaks. Normal. Okay, can we change this bit so that normal is 3, but anything below 3 or above 3 is uh, too few or too many? No, any values above 3 should uh, be too many and uh, any values below three considered too few so just stick to three three and uh, this goes to three four five okay let's check it out so we have a normal i like the point one better the multi point nine uh, Okay, this is not good. Can I have it 333? Three, three, three? No. Okay, this will look super weird. Okay, we can go halves. So we have 0, 1, 2.5. I'll get the uh, GPT-4 to double check. 3.5, because I think there's a problem. They meant to be overlapped so, uh, somehow. So if this is 2.5, this should be whatever, 2. But I'll try this out. Okay, Copilot doesn't say there's any problem with this. Uh, how about changing to... Changing the membership functions for the positive underscore peaks fuzzy variable as you suggested is a good idea. It adjusts the ranges for what constitutes too few, normal, and too many positive peaks. Here's the updated code snippet based on your suggestion. This change will effectively shift the definitions for the categories of positive peaks in your fuzzy logic system. The too few category now covers a broader range. The normal category is more narrowly defined, and the too many category starts at a higher value. It's important to ensure that these new ranges align well with the real world data and the behavior you expect in the system. Okay, so when we have a few, too few, so is the too few uh, used positive peaks too few? Not using it, are we? Oh, we are. This rule doesn't seem to take effect. Check the rules. Yes, yeah, so if they have positive peaks, too few of them or too many, they have the multi is likely that makes sense, but it doesn't seem to behave as expected. Explainable AI. <laughs> it's hard to explain. I need to go over all these rules and we can start uh, commenting them out one by one. Is that a good idea? So if we comment all that, we we'll just, yeah, we we'll just get an error. So I have likely, likely, possible, unlikely, unlikely, likely, likely. Is that a simple way of by getting rid of the rules. I mean, I can just do this, comment that out, just do rule one. So with this stuff, if we're only looking at positive peaks in rule one, we'll just do this. Yes, yeah, so that, that rule doesn't work. Yeah, we need to check um, all the rules. So ideally, we'll have some sort of graphical interface for designing this. We do not have one. Yeah, because this becomes rather complicated. Just bring it back to where it works. Yeah, so I don't like the abnormality of 0.5. I don't need to go 0 to 6. Depth of peaks three it's a good one so the abnormality is probability of the signal being abnormal actually wait now it's working better 
So I still, uh, right, so I get the point 0.1. Uh, this one is missing a negative peak, so I'm getting a point 0.4 for abnormality probability. Uh, that's the same. A uh, point 0.3 for when I'm missing the third positive peak. Point 0.1 for normal. It's actually pretty good. Point 0.3 when I miss the first positive peak. Point 0.5, yeah, for this weird thing. The QRS is not quite right. Had trouble calculating normalized amplitude over there. Yeah, that's another weird thing. I'm getting 0.5. So now the numbers kind of go from uh, 0, 0.1 to 0. 0.5, which is okay, but they do not cover the entire range. So not ideal. And that's wrong. Uh, why is it 0.1 was missing a negative P? And, and the a really important thing that this is meant to be a uh, scalable not scalable what's called when uh, it uh, it can be applied onto another data set and will still work what's the name for it the point one for normal it's good it's a low might have something that prevents the same signal appearing twice or at least when we are testing I think there's some sort of in the game logic there's some sort of probability for I think it's 40 60 for normal and abnormal but then it could be another rule of uh, not repeating itself but this works uh, works pretty well uh, can you explain so we'll explain the rules uh, uh, write the description yeah because it's not just the rules it's the um, it's uh, you can you can still play the game right yes so it should be normal. So I should not be clicking on it. I'll be getting why I'm not getting my points. Correct rejection is going up. Ah, because I had 20. <laughs> it went. Uh, it went like super negative. It's actually not showing the correct score there. Because I had 29 misses. Um, right. So the interesting thing would be you have your score and the robot score. And yes. Someone will say that the robot is cheating, but the robot is uh, also just looking at the waveform. It doesn't have anything else. It doesn't have any data on how the waveforms were generated. And then you will have the score a, of the robot on the other side. I don't like this point one. Let's check the negative. Hey, can we quickly check the negative peaks as well? The rules uh, for it. Can you look up the code and explain what the current rules are and the membership functions? I'll have a look at it myself as well. Sure. Let's review the negative peaks membership functions and rules from your Flask application's fuzzy logic code. Too few. Defined for values between 0 and 0 0.5, peaking at 0 0.5. This represents scenarios where there are very few negative peaks. Normal. Range is between 0 0.5 to 2, with a peak at 1. This category is for a normal count of negative peaks. Too many. Covers the range from 2 to 4, peaking at 3. It indicates an abnormally high count of negative peaks. Rule 2. If there are too few negative peaks and the positive peaks are not normal, it's likely to be an abnormality. Rule 3. If there are too many negative peaks, it's possible to be an abnormality. Rule 4. If both positive and negative peaks are normal, the abnormality is unlikely. These rules integrate the negative peaks count into the fuzzy logic system to assess ECG waveform abnormalities. The categories and rules are designed to capture different scenarios that might indicate an abnormal heart rhythm. Adjustments to these functions and rules should be made based on how well they align with actual ECG data and the specific requirements of your analysis. And this line, the codifying fuzzy rule, which is a key component, multi-valued logic. Yes function in this case the rule rule two is a fine force if negative peaks is too few and positive peaks is not normal abnormality is likely like okay so another big question that yes you will need a cardiologist uh, to answer this is uh, do we have likely possible and unlikely we can have more um a higher range can uh, can you draw this uh, can you plot those membership functions 
a plot on one graph that won't work with it because we don't have the plot of a view okay actually might work where would it be displayed yes starting give me a warning the plot is nowhere to be seen it is doing the plotting but it won't work any suggestions <laughs> you can ignore the warning that's nice it's trying to plot the membership functions but it's not able to do so this might be a problem yeah i would like to view this in um, on the front panel because this will plot it uh, using matplotlib do i have matplot yeah we do have this plot and um, i have a trouble with rule three is there a way to graphically review how the rules are interacting with one another? Here's a sample code. Okay, okay, okay. Too. This sounds great. Uh, I would like to do it, but uh, can we plot it on the front end instead of in Python? Okay, so it seems like it generated or generate something. Uh, so we have this game. It's on bioniccaos.com that you can play it looks essentially exactly like this let's restart this so you have to the rules of the game is to not click on ecg electrocardiogram waveform that looks uh, normal and yes click on waveforms that look abnormal you can see it's uh, uh, there's only in this game there's only like five uh, of them so that's normal and once you get to 50 points it starts scrolling faster so the idea is that you have to keep uh, the greens going up the reds staying low or zero so i'm getting all this normal and it's uh, so if i did not click on normal it's a hit I don't know why there's so many normals keep coming through if this is abnormal if i click on it it's also a hit okay now it's becoming <laughs> uh becoming harder that's obviously an abnormal so i have to click on it that's normal so i do not click on it do not click do not click that's abnormal because it was missing something that's obviously that's abnormal that's uh, abnormal abnormal okay now it will become harder that's normal it becomes faster as you go up in score i don't know why there's so many normals in a row that was abnormal it was missing something uh, that's abnormal obviously this looks all skewed up uh, abnormal abnormal so you can go try this game on the side it's free no registration is required and it becomes crazy hard it's a bunch of normals normals abnormal i think earlier i got to like a thousand points there's no lead oh i missed one okay first miss so it was an abnormal waveform and i did not click on it okay this is crazy fast now okay i think you get the point let's see if i can keep explaining what i'm trying to do now while still still playing uh, okay so now what we're trying to do so this game is already running oops missed that it's on the website and now what we are doing is training a bot to play the game and then it's not it cannot cheat because the bot is only operating in the back end okay super it's crazy now um, so those are the results of the analysis what is the goal for this feature selection so features so we're looking currently as multiple features oops that's a false alarm i clicked on the normal okay now it's just super crazy <laughs> i can't do it anymore <laughs> pretty sure there was a video where i 
reach like thousand points maybe i'm uh, not uh, focused at the moment anyway the, if i stop clicking the score will go down so the features i'm looking at someone is asking what is your goals for this what are the feature selection so the feature i'm currently looking at is uh, frequency uh, raw a positive number of peaks negative number of peaks amplitude and that's it at the moment later we'll be also looking at kurtosis kurtosis and other things as well they're like standard things in ecg analysis if you look at the literature or ask uh, gpt ChatGPT can do it now what are the current features i'm looking at and what feature frequency doesn't seem to to actually be very useful in my current ah so the main thing is for this algorithm to be generalizable right so if you load different data set it should still work so in my case if i keep loading more a uh, waveform examples so the waveform examples are all generated in javascript on the front end all the game logic is in the front end but all the um, currently we're using fuzzy logic which is like explainable ai explainable machine learning and that's all happening in the back end and they so they don't know of one another right so the back end only gets the waveform it doesn't get anything else it doesn't know how the waveforms were actually generated so it doesn't have those names for example so it can tell if it's normal or abnormal or the ratio of them uh, appearing on the screen is also unknown to the back end flask the application no sorry this this whole thing is a flask application uh, but the python code this function the fuzzy logic analysis doesn't know that later we're also planning to add a neural network doing the same task and then you can see essentially ideally on the screen you will have your score I'm currently at 640 i already had a few bunch of misses and false alarms so false alarms is obviously when you click on a normal ECG and misses when you miss an abnormal when you do not click on abnormal one it's super crazy fast so I can't do it anymore see if you can reach a higher score currently the machine learning algorithm is speeding speeding out an abnormality score and this abnormality score yeah github copilot it's gonna be a bit hopeless uh, mainly relying on gpt4 to do this okay this kept uh, turning my speech into text which is fine okay kids so can you review what we did so far quickly if you want to be funny you can be funny but definitely no emojis <laughs> i don't want to see any emojis in the responses and keep it short Let's see what it says all right let's do a quick recap no emojis straight to the point front end you've got a javascript based system generating ecg waveforms with all the game logic handled client side need for interactivity and user engagement back end flask application this is where the magic happens your Python code analyzes the waveforms using fuzzy logic. It's like a black box. It doesn't know how the waveforms are generated or their labels, normal or abnormal, from the front end. Fuzzy logic, this is your AI's brain, making sense of the waveforms. It gives you an abnormality score based on the input waveform. Machine learning, you're planning to introduce a neural network to tackle the same task. This will add another layer of analysis to your setup. Game mechanics, the player clicks on ECG waveforms, aiming to identify abnormalities. Misses, not clicking an abnormal waveform, and false alarms, clicking a normal waveform, affect the score. Scalability and generalization, your goal is to make the system adaptable to different datasets. The backend should reliably analyze any waveform, regardless of its origin. Future plans, visualizing the fuzzy logic analysis on the front end and comparing it with the neural network's output. That's going to be an interesting comparison. So, you're blending gaming, education, and advanced AI in a really cool way. The fuzzy logic provides explainability, and adding a neural network will boost the analysis power. The key challenge will be ensuring that both systems generalize well across various ECG patterns. Keep up the awesome work, Rocketman Scientist Woman Scientist.
didn't I say to not use any emojis? And Mirza is asking, what do you think about training model for voice classification? Right? <laughs> uh, pronunciation, wrong pronunciation. I think I was saying it before. I think uh, when people learn English uh, from now on, they'll probably be optimizing for the robot to understand them. So they will be talking like this, hopefully. When they start pronouncing words in a better fashion, the transcript will be better as well. Yeah, I was doing it for my uh, videos and everything. So the live streams on YouTube get transcribed. Then I get the text out. Uh, I do still have to correct it. So there are obvious things like EEG, ECG that it doesn't get. It missed. EG entirely. Yeah, EG it's always writing EG. So yes, there would be some sort of I wish not wish could be easily done. I wish you had a tool like that. A speech rate and volume analysis. So this one is also on the site. It's uh I'll open it in another link, see if it's still working. Uh, some people are complaining it doesn't work for them. You actually have to read the instructions. It's only working in Chromium based, uh, only working in Chromium based uh, browser browsers. And this one will work differently. And yes, it will do a volume and speech analysis, as you can see here. But uh, yeah, it might need more, more work. Some problems with the side. I'm pretty sure there will be some errors or whatever. The point with this one, it's all JavaScript. Uh, where is it? The uh, network. Why is it not sure? Why is it not recording? Whatever. Anyway, it's all uh, JavaScript. And it's currently just looking at the uh, speech rate and volume. And yes, hopefully you can train this one to better recognize um, individual voices and stuff so that could be something we'll be adding here later on it's already working on the website you can look it up it's uh, using a common uh, javascript uh, javascript uh, module so isn't this one doing any better i think so fixer no i think so yeah yeah if you talk normally it's getting confused yeah if you talk like to a five-year-old then it uh, may get things correctly so anyway this is on the site as well you can go check it out if there are any ads popping up i apologize in advance hopefully they're actually relevant <laughs> to to you i don't know how well google is placing placing ads these days sometimes it's better than others right so if i don't touch the cam don't click on anything the score will uh, start i think it will start going down because there is a uh, there's a 60 40 uh, ratio for normal and abnormal or 60 percent abnormal and 40 normal so if you don't click on it it will keep uh oops East Coast is it a relevant ad? I don't know, it doesn't look like. So this video brought to you by <laughs> no, it's <laughs> it's totally irrelevant. <laughs> no. Car rentals aside. You can essentially go and like clear those out. Hopefully if you go on the side you'll actually get some relevant ads, whatever it is you're into. Uh Python and uh, development and stuff. But yeah, it's not a given. So currently we're fine tuning uh, this game. So it gives the abnormality score. Yeah, that one is wrong. That one gets 0.5. That's a good. That's good. A uh, 0.3. Okay. 0.1 for normal. But then we also get this one problem. 0.3 for this one is okay. Then we get 0.3 is fine. 0.1 for this is a, it's for normal 
it should be 0.1 or 0 that's fine the only problem is you will probably have to add another fuzzy logic rule is that we also get 0.1 even if we don't have that negative peak it's not cool yeah this one uh, that should have shown a negative peak of zero i hope it actually did in theory there should be two negative peaks there should be two negative peaks one before and one after the QRS uh, complex. I'm still transcribing. Can you? Sh uh, no, I mean that we can just look it up on uh, uh, Wikipedia what the uh, normal ECG should look like. But uh, okay, the current problem. Can we go back to the rules? Uh, there's a problem. Can we double check or add a rule that? make sure makes sure when we have low number yeah when we have too few negative peaks so essentially zero below 0.5 whatever it is that the score for abnormality goes up okay so it's suggesting to add a rule we have seven rules already and this is to do negative peaks yeah we can combine this two and the both should be likely can we get uh, i don't know how to do it <laughs> can you combine these two rules into one with uh, or condition let's see because in theory Copilot should be GPT-4 as well, right? So this should be rule three. Oops, rule three. Negative peaks too many, too few. Abnormality likely. Sounds good. Sounds very good. Let's test it. Abnormality 0 0.9. 0 0.9. 0 0.5 what why and this problem too few too many negative peaks negative peaks negative peaks so if we have less than one is a problem and pa, 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 pa. i think this thing should overlap so we have that and we have that rule three by the way, let me know if you have done fuzzy logic before or are you using it as machine learning? I really do not know why everyone is using neural networks considering they're like a black box. I was thinking doing like a neural network and then use a fuzzy logic to try and explain what is it the neural network doing. So let me know what you think about that. But currently back to the membership functions and rule number three is it the problem that the membership functions do not overlap can you plot uh, this one and tell me how to improve the numbers there the rules generally should be that uh, if we don't have any negative peaks the abnormality is highly likely if we have between one and two negative peaks it's normal and above two is again uh, highly likely to be abnormal ECG you yeah, have to check this uh, text to speech thing this should be peaks not peaks it's highly likely if we have between one and two it's a normal ECG and above two is highly likely to be abnormal ECG 
why do I need to specify rules with unlikely abnormality? Wouldn't it contradict the other rules potentially? I'm obviously mispronouncing rules. Always in front of those rules. Systems, specifying rules for different scenarios, including those that lead to outcomes like unlikely abnormality, is crucial for several reasons. Completeness, including rules for various scenarios, ensures your system can handle a wide range of input. This includes not only clear cut cases of abnormality, but also cases where the data suggests a normal condition. By explicitly defining what constitutes normal in your system, you provide a more complete and nuanced analysis. Balance and contrast, rules that lead to unlikely abnormality, provide a necessary balance and contrast to those that indicate a high likelihood of abnormality. This helps prevent the system from being overly biased towards diagnosing abnormalities. It's important in medical applications, where false positives can be as significant as false negatives. Avoiding contradictions, in fuzzy logic, rules don't necessarily contradict each other. Instead, they offer different perspectives on the data. Each rule contributes to the final output based on its conditions. The system then aggregates these contributions to produce a nuanced result. By having rules for both likely abnormality and unlikely abnormality, you ensure that the system can differentiate between different states in a nuanced way. Defuzzification, in the defuzzification step, where the fuzzy logic results are converted into a single crisp output, having a range of outputs from likely to unlikely abnormality, allows for a more accurate and meaningful final value. This is especially important when the outputs of the fuzzy system are used for decision making. In your case, having a rule that explicitly states when an ECG is likely normal or unlikely abnormality is important for cases where the waveform does not exhibit clear signs of abnormality. This helps to avoid overdiagnosing abnormalities and provides a clearer understanding of what the system considers normal. Remember, the goal of a fuzzy logic system is not just to identify when something is wrong, but also to recognize when it's right. Can okay, we combine this to a control I combine these two rules? Okay, we're currently actually not looking at the amplitude. Uh, let's do GitHub. What? That's a new error. That should work now. Right. It's freaking again. I don't know what happened. It just threw me out. Right. We wanted to review this bit of the code. With this error. This is because. We are currently we currently don't have any rules for amplitude. Okay, so we added three more rules uh, that had to do with the amplitude uh, feature. Uh, amplitude feature. We're not currently using them. Have to update this. We just go select all that. Control I. Update. Edit job. Ten rules. <laughs> What's up? Uh, it's super long. What's it? Rule 11. Okay, do I really need rule number 10? Isn't it already covered by all rules 1, 2, 3, or 4? Okay, let's get rid of it. Our yeah, problem with amplitude. Something like this meant to be done by a cardiologist or ECG specialist, technician, a ECG waveform reviewer. I'm only doing it because I do not have access to one. Someone wants to, once, if someone has experience in this field, please do let me know. These rules just uh, should apply common sense. Just worried with the amplitude. So we have low, medium, high, and it's actually, I think those that used for exporting so we can plot in uh, in the front end yeah otherwise i'm not sure why why is it done i don't remember why do we return all the membership functions what is returned by the fuzzy logic analysis function it's asking to provide the code that's all so i'm selecting it might be too much. How many currently we have like three, 300 lines. It's kind of getting out of hand. I don't think we need this kind of stuff. Just uh, about this code. Can you remind me why are we returning all the membership functions? I don't remember. Is it so 
we can plot them on the front end also the amplitude rules the low medium and high there's a bit of a concern there because uh, it might be that currently high is actually normal uh, ECG well because we don't have any examples with uh, extremely large amplitudes so the normal ECG waveform is what we have for a normal waveform so we have this why the score is just going up all right because that's a normal i forget how the game works because that's a normal ecg that i didn't click on that's okay so the raw amplitude is currently 300 it's going all the way up to 349 yeah there but still for normal ECG I get an abnormality score of 0.5 that's not right before I was getting 0.1 which was better okay, anyway we need to uh, keep uh, essentially training it adjusting those uh, rules uh, abnormality value for normal waveform is 0.5 before it used to be 0 0.1 which is more likely which was better it seems like you're observing unexpected behavior in your fuzzy logic system related to the classification of normal ecg waveforms specifically the abnormality values for what you expect to be normal ecg readings are higher than anticipated let's break down the potential issues and consider some solutions raw amplitude if the raw amplitude for normal ECG is consistently around 3, but your system scales it down to 0 0.5, this could be an issue with how amplitude normalization is being done. Abnormality score for normal waveforms. Previously, normal waveforms had lower abnormality scores, around 0 0.1, which aligned better with your expectations. Now, you're seeing higher scores, around 0 0.5, indicating a potential misalignment in the system's interpretation. Normalization of amplitude. Review the normalization process for amplitude. It should accurately reflect the range of amplitudes found in normal ECG data. If 3 is a typical amplitude for a normal ECG, the normalization process should consider this. Membership function adjustments. Revisit the membership functions for amplitude. They might need adjustment to better capture the range of normal and abnormal amplitudes based on your dataset. Rule calibration. The rules involving amplitude might need recalibration. If a normal ECG amplitude is leading to a higher abnormality score, it suggests that the rules or the membership functions are not accurately capturing the nature of the data. Collect more data, more data, especially with known classifications, can help in recalibrating the membership functions and rules. Real-world ECG data, particularly with expert annotations, can be invaluable here. Expert consultation. Consult with medical experts to understand typical amplitude ranges in ECGs. This expert knowledge can guide the adjustment of your membership functions and rules. Testing and iteration. Continuously test the system with different scenarios and iteratively adjust the rules and membership functions. This process helps in fine-tuning the system to respond accurately to various waveform characteristics. Incremental adjustments. Make small, incremental changes to the membership functions and rules, then test the system's response. This approach helps isolate the impact of each change. Logging and analysis. Implement detailed logging of the system's input and output values. Analyze these logs to understand how different inputs are leading to the current outputs. By methodically adjusting and testing your system, you can align the abnormality scores more closely with what is expected for normal versus abnormal ECG waveforms. This process might require several iterations to get right, but it's essential for ensuring the reliability and accuracy of your diagnostic tool. We're providing code suggestions or prompts for GitHub Copilot to modify the actual script. Understood. I'll provide both code suggestions and prompts for GitHub Copilot to help you modify the script. Adjusting amplitude normalization. S. Suggestion. Review and modify the normalization function for amplitude to ensure it reflects the real amplitude range in normal ECGs. Tuning membership functions. Suggestion. Modify the amplitude membership functions to align with real-world ECG amplitude data. Code snippet. Python copy code amplitude, low, equals fuzz. Trimph, amplitude, universe, 0, 0, 1, hash adjust these values based on data. Amplitude, medium, equals fuzz. Trimph, amplitude, universe, 0 0.5, 2, 3.5 hash adjust these values amplitude high equals fuzz trimph amplitude 
universe, three, four, five, hash adjust these values. Suggestion, re-examine and adjust the rules that use amplitude to better classify normal and abnormal ECGs. Good snippet, Python copy code rule eight equals control. Rule, amplitude, medium, abnormality, unlikely, hash adjust rule as per new definitions. For amplitude normalization, write. Write a Python function to normalize ECG amplitude values based on a maximum normal amplitude threshold. For tuning membership functions, create Python code using scikit fuzzy to define membership functions for ECG amplitude with updated ranges to accurately reflect normal and abnormal readings. Refining fuzzy logic rules. Generate Python code to adjust fuzzy logic rules in a medical diagnostic system where ECG amplitude is a key factor, ensuring accurate classification of normal and abnormal readings. Remember, when using GitHub Copilot or any i-based code generation tool, it's important to review and test the generated code thoroughly. These tools can provide a great starting point, but they may not always fully grasp the nuances of your specific application or data. The amplitude did change. So we have low, medium, high. Um, okay, real world. But the way those waveforms are generated, I don't know how real world they are, but it meant to be normalized. I don't know what you're talking about. So obviously, mark. Can you check the code again? The amplitude membership function should be using normalized values from uh, zero to one. Uh, generally, I thought uh, the actual amplitude of the ECG waveform is not crucial. Like we're not looking at the absolute numbers, but the ratios between different peaks, for example. Yep. You're right. In the context of fuzzy logic for ECG waveform analysis, the absolute amplitude values are less important than their relative proportions or normalized values. The goal is to interpret the ECG waveform characteristics in a manner that reflects the clinical significance, often focusing on ratios or relative changes rather than absolute measures. Given that the amplitude values are normalized between 0 and 1, the membership functions should be defined accordingly. Here's how you might adjust them. Low amplitude, considered low if it's significantly below the normal range. Medium amplitude, represents the typical amplitude range for a normal ECG. High amplitude, significantly above what is typically observed in a normal ECG. If the relative ratios between different peaks, e.g., the ratio of the heights of the P-wave, QRS complex, and T-wave in an ECG, are more clinically relevant, you should ensure your system captures and analyzes these relationships. This might involve calculating ratios. Develop a method to calculate the relevant okay, ratios. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, going places now. Okay, so we're happy to... Uh, let's check the signal. I mean, yeah, this is cheating. Uh, because we're actually looking at the signal and adjusting the fuzzy logic parameters. The fuzzy logic parameters ideally should be generic because then we can apply them for any uh, ECG waveform. But currently the amplitude, so if we have a value of 3, 4, 9, the normalized amplitude is 1. And 3, 4, 9, we get some problem with that code. Yeah, we need some example with like a large uh, amplitude noise. So, yeah, the other thing with the way the normalization works is, uh, I think it's taking from memory, it's, it's uh, actually storing the maximum value and updating it. So if the current value is larger than then what we previously had, it will uh, make the current value the absolute uh, maximum. I think it's a global variable or something. So we might need to change that and also consider an option, like with the current small data set, is that uh, the highest amplitude is of a normal ECG waveform. Dynamic maximum amplitude. Your system updates the maximum amplitude based on the highest value seen so far. This approach could be problematic because if an anomalously high amplitude, possibly due to noise or a rare event, is encountered, it skews the normalization for all subsequent data. Implications. Such a method might not be ideal for a generic system intended to be applied to any ECG waveform. It could lead to misinterpretation of normal amplitude values if the global maximum is set too high. Fixed maximum amplitude. C. Consider using a fixed maximum amplitude value based on clinical knowledge of ECG waveforms. 
This fixed value would represent the upper limit of what's considered a normal amplitude in a typical ECG. Use a statistical approach to determine a reasonable maximum amplitude. This could involve analyzing a large dataset of ECGs to find a value above which a certain percentage, e.g., 95%, of all amplitude readings fall. This method would be more robust against outliers and would adapt to the dataset used. Implement outlier detection in your system to identify and handle anomalously high amplitude readings that might skew your normalization. This could involve techniques like setting thresholds, using standard deviations, or more complex statistical methods. Consult with medical professionals to understand the typical range of amplitudes in ECG waveforms and use this information to set your normalization parameters. Adjusting the normalization function, MO. Handling outliers. Implement a method to detect and manage outliers in your amplitude data. Adapting your system to use a more stable and clinically relevant method for amplitude normalization will likely improve its generalizability and accuracy. This change, combined with outlier management, should make your system more robust and applicable to a broader range of ECG waveforms. Remember, continuous testing and consultation with medical professionals are key to fine-tuning such systems. If you are a medical professional, do let me know what you think, but as well as the students or anyone else can uh, provide the feedback. Sorry, just as an easy fix, just removed a uh, rule 9 and simplified rule 8 to just include the low a amplitude so when you have one rule with amplitudes that when it's low the abnormality is likely normalized amplitude needs to be fixed it's like it stopped working yeah three four nine so i have like 37 times amplitude is being mentioned calculate amplitude yeah it's not working correctly just update what no <laughs> definitely not it's not what we meant can we review how the raw amplitude is being normalized it doesn't seem to be correct to begin with does that make sense because we don't have the global variables yet the global variables yes yeah, set to infinity and uh, we need to clean the code we're not normalizing uh, yeah we're not normalizing the number of peaks why do we need to do this certainly Let's review how the raw amplitude is being normalized in your code and address the issue with the global variables and their initialization. Based on your code snippet, here's how the amplitude normalization seems to work. Amplitude calculation. The amplitude of each waveform is calculated as the difference between its maximum and minimum values. Normalization function. The normalization of the amplitude appears to be done through the normalize function, which scales the amplitude relative to a global minimum and maximum. Global variables initialization. The global variables for amplitude, global underscore min underscore amp and global underscore max underscore amp, are initially set to infinity and negative infinity, respectively. This setup is typical for establishing a running minimum or maximum, but it relies on updating these values correctly during the processing of each waveform. Updating global variables. It looks like you might be missing the step where you update the global underscore min underscore amp and global underscore max underscore amp with the current waveform's amplitude. This step is critical for the normalization process to work correctly. Update global amplitude ranges. You need you need to adjust the global minimum and maximum amplitude values each time you process a new waveform, similar to what you're doing with peaks. Normalize the amplitude based on these updated global values. Here's how you might modify the code. Initial extreme values. The initial extreme values for the global variables are standard for capturing the range of data. However, ensure that these values are updated correctly during processing. Normalization method. Review whether the normalization method, subtracting the min and dividing by the range, suits your application's needs and correctly reflects the variations in amplitude you expect to see in normal and abnormal ECG waveforms. Robustness against outliers. Consider how outliers might affect your global maximum and minimum values. Depending on your data, you might need a more robust method to handle extreme values or noise. By adjusting how you update the global amplitude range and apply normalization, you can ensure that your system more accurately reflects the characteristics of the ECG waveforms it analyzes. Okay, how about adding other features extracted from the ECG waveform? Can you make any recommendations? A cortosis and other stuff. Certainly. Adding additional features extracted from ECG waveforms can enhance the accuracy and robustness of your analysis. Here are some key ECG features commonly used in waveform analysis. 
Heart rate, HR, asterisk D. Description, the number of heartbeats per minute. Extraction, calculate the time interval between successive QRS complexes, RR intervals, and convert it into beats per minute. QRS complex duration, description, the duration of the QRS complex, which represents ventricular depolarization. Extraction, measure the width of the QRS complex in milliseconds. Clinical relevance, prolonged or shortened QRS duration can indicate various cardiac conditions, including bundle branch block or ventricular hypertrophy. Description, the interval from the start of the Q wave to the end of the T wave. Extraction, measure the time from the beginning of the QRS complex to the end of the T wave. Clinical relevance, abnormal quart intervals can indicate electrolyte imbalances, medication effects, or genetic conditions like long quart syndrome. P wave analysis. Description, examination of the P wave, representing atrial depolarization. Extraction, analyze the amplitude and duration of the P wave. Clinical relevance, abnormal P waves may indicate atrial enlargement or atrial arrhythmias. ST segment analysis. Description, the segment between the QRS complex and the T wave. Extraction, evaluate the elevation or depression of the ST segment relative to the baseline. Clinical relevance, ST segment changes can be indicative of myocardial ischemia or infarction. P wave analysis. Description, analysis of the T wave, which represents ventricular repolarization. Extraction, assess the amplitude and symmetry of the T wave. Clinical relevance, abnormal T waves can indicate electrolyte disturbances, ischemia, or ventricular hypertrophy. Description, the variability in the RR interval. Extraction, calculate the differences in the RR interval durations over time. Clinical relevance, increased RR variability can be a sign of autonomic nervous system dysfunction. To implement these feature extractions, you'll need algorithms capable of accurately identifying ECG waveform components, P wave, QRS complex, T wave, etc. This often involves signal processing techniques like filtering, peak detection, and waveform segmentation. Once extracted, these features can be integrated into your fuzzy logic system or used as inputs to a neural network. They provide a richer dataset that can lead to more accurate and clinically relevant analyses. The extraction of these features from raw ECG data can be complex and requires a good understanding of both signal processing and the clinical aspects of ECG interpretation. Collaboration with medical professionals is advised to ensure the clinical validity of your feature extraction methods. Yeah, there is now a relevant uh, tool, uh, the ECG Synthetic Signal Generator. We can use it uh, to generate more uh, waveform examples. It has a uh, noise to it as well, noise option to it as well. That's the default. Uh, ideally, we also have a drop down that pre selects this uh, value to show. Uh, uh, different types of uh, ECG waveform abnormalities. And yes, this is easier than dealing with EEG that is uh, more random. I might finish here and uh, go check out biochaos.com. Uh, watch some ads. Sometimes they don't actually load. Some hopefully get some uh, relevant ads like uh, a university or not yeah <laughs> shouldn't say anything brought to you by a university <laughs> uh, uh, i'll see you next time bye